I think it's uh, similar to young people everywhere that classical music is also for either really weird people or for old people because they can't listen to anything more because their brains will fall out if they listen to rock or something like that. There is a certain people who say, not for me, which is fine. At least they've checked it out. And that's all we want people to do is check it out. There is a whole nation which should have access but it is working gradually towards that. அப்பதான் <laughs> அது <laughs> My interest in music started when I was a young boy. In terms of listening, I mean, you're moved by music no matter what age you are. Different genres, different forms move you differently. But one thing which marked me away from some of my other friends was my father's desire 
to make me learn an instrument. So he said, I want you to learn the tabla, so you can play for me sometimes, maybe. Uh, so he got an elderly tabla teacher for me. I would be like, oh no, I, mean, I can't play any longer. So I would be all grumpy and all, but he was so patient with me. He tried to impart to me uh, an understanding of the concept of rhythm and the beats, uh, which I didn't realize it at that point of time. But when later on I started to listen to classical music, I, there hasn't been a day where I haven't thanked him for imparting that to me because it was really like half the battle won. शिक्षा इस तरह से देना चाहता हूं अपने समझे बच्चों को अपने शिक्षकों को कि वो इसको इसका सेंटीमेंट कुछ समझने की कोशिश करें और उसको उसी तरह से कुछ ना कुछ उसका पार्ट तो अदा करने की कोशिश करें listen to it what is this but because it's something different they get attracted and what they were listening to is the deepest of the classical music dupat it's not a light form it is absolutely heaviest form and yet dupat and dagar sahab were able to attract these children and keep them there for three hours that's what i'm talking about all we need to do is expose this nobody can take from them they may never be exposed to classical music ever again but if nothing else they know that this is indian they know now that what the heritage is that part of the heritage is this wonderful beautiful music eternal music blissful music
We went to this uh, concert of the two Duggars at the Brooklyn Academy of Music in New York. And I still remember that uh, uh, going into the program and uh, you know there's this concept of a black box in science. You know what's entering and you know what's leaving, but you don't know what's happening inside. So I walked inside the hall, but I walked out walking one inch above the ground and I didn't know what had happened. So I said, well, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you, it can happen to anyone. The philosophy of Spiknake is to bring to the youth of the world, I would say, things that today are missing in our lives. And uh, this is not true just in India, it's true all over the world. So this organization is doing a wonderful job in popularizing Indian classical music because they make them to organize the, the concert and then the big people, big artists, you know, they, they go and uh, they are in schools and colleges and so those students uh, get this kind of exposure, uh, which was not possible before. But for the last 28 years, I think, they have been doing this. They've put the reservation charts here, and the platform is that side. So if you want to check, you've got to do a bit of a daredevil act to check where your name is. So Naveen and me are supposed to be in cable B. quite honest, they don't have an option. The whole school comes and listens to the music. Because with classical music, you have to give it a, a chance. It's not popular music. Popular music throughout the world, you instantly like it or dislike it. Classical music, you have to give it a little bit of time. You have to be a little patient. Most people then get attracted to it. Different people at different uh, levels, obviously. My name is Naveen Khilnani. I belong to a NGO called SPIC Make, which stands for Society for the Promotion 
of Indian classical music and culture amongst youth. In fact, one of your ex-students, Sri Venkatesh Kumar, performs now for Spikmake in schools and colleges throughout the world. Hopefully, one day, you people also, if you study well, why not you come also and perform now for Spikmake in all over India. What we believe that culture is very, very important as a rooting uh, mechanism for a person. In the human development of an individual, he has to be rooted. Only like a tree, good roots make a good plant. A certain grounding in your own cultural traditions makes you a more complete human being. And then you can move to any part of the world. You don't lose your balance. You are not floundering at any stage because you have your own feet firmly grounded in your own cultural traditions. And I think those people who have a firm grounding in their inheritance um, make much greater successes of their life. We tell the young children that culture is only important to you if you feel it is relevant in your daily life, not just the concept. And we believe that it is. For example, listening to classical music, not just once but as a habit of listening to it constantly, has an ability, classical music has the ability to concentrate the mind or calm the mind and concentrate for. Most classical music, as I understand it, is a meditation. It's like you become totally focused and single-pointed through it, and then you can go very deep inside you and touch a chord which very few people, other people can, and that gives you a high higher than the highest high that one can ever think of. You know, there's, even while listening to it, sometimes you get that high. And mind you, I've tried out other highs too. <laughs> See, the beauty is that at all points in time, in all classical music, there is this concept of freedom within constraints. That's the beauty of it. That's what life is all about, as, I, as far as I understand it. If you have total freedom, you can't do anything. If you have totally constrained, you can't do anything. It's freedom in constraints that makes it very, very, very powerful. And that's the philosophy which I think comes in through classical music or Indian classical music. <laughs> Oh.
बोलने की थी आँख देखने की थी कान सुनने की थी ये हमारी कोशिश का नतीजा नहीं है ये हमें ईश्वर ने अल्लाह ने गॉड ने हमको दिया है लेकिन हम हमारा काम है कि हम क्या बोल रहे हैं हम क्या सुन देख रहे हैं हम क्या सुन रहे हैं तो जाहिर बात ये एक साउंड है तो ये मैं जानता हूं इसको पहचानना मुद्राएं बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है ये ये जो जो कुछ भी मूव हो रहा है ये साउंड को वर्ल्ड को यानी प्रोड्यूस करने के लिए बहुत अहम बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट सिलसिला है हमें चाहिए ऐसा यानी पंच स्पंच का हम नहीं बैठ सकते हार्ड चाहिए हमें ताकि जो कि नाच जो है वो अग्नि रूप है फायर द बेस ऑफ योर स्पाइन इज ऑन द अर्थ एंड देन यू चार्ज अप योर बैक बोन एंड यू सिंग इन अ वे दैट यू सिटिंग इन पद्मासन विद योर बैक इरेक्ट एंड द वे योर हैंड्स मूव रिफ्लेक्ट द वे द म्यूजिकल नोट्स आर बींग used it's at least it's that way with dagar sab some of our ancient texts talk about music as being nad yoga as the yoga of sound it obviously involves a lot of position postures that the way sound is produced it the way it travels in your body till it comes through you know your throat your sound is produced four fingers below your navel and the way it travels from the navel to the heart then to the throat and comes out in various ways so with someone who has that kind of a perspective in terms of voice production he of course stresses a lot on position the way you sit if you're fidgeting around you know it's not right you should be able to station yourself only and only when you station yourself can you produce sound in a particular way which is desirable for him ah ye ma ma pa pa da da sa sa re re ga I'm not imitating Guruji. I'm trying to feel inside the same experience of sound in the body, how a little drop of sound can resound in the entire body. And we also do practice some special exercises early morning connected to the pranayama, to the breathing exercises from yoga, and how the sound goes together with the breathing. I was a musician, a jazz singer and a composer and I had the training also as an opera singer. I'm Italian so I've been trained first <laughs> as an opera singer with a very different quality of voice. <laughs> Those kinds of sound which doesn't work in India. I mean so I had to start again everything. I had to forget about my past training, about my career, about everything and just sitting at his feet for hours and days and months and years 
And the moment I met him, he just sang one note, but the way he sang the note broke all my, my fears, having a guru, or it, it was like a stone against the mirror. Something crashed and I start to cry and I realized in a while that he was my guru, he was going to be my guru. It's not only going for a class, but you have to share food uh, and talks uh, and everyday life. Then things come like that. And it's kind of and his blessing is also very important in my life. He changed my attitude, attitude towards uh, music, towards singing. I still sing jazz music, but with a very different approach. <laughs> The concept of our music, we have to know about it. First thing is, this music is there to purify your heart and your mind. You know, it's, it has some connection with God, you see. When we want to talk to God, this is the best medium we find that, you know, we, we can talk to the God uh, with this uh, kind of music. And it, it has something which, uh, elevates your soul and, and you feel that you are in a trance and you it tends you to become a good human being. Coming to the present form of music, it is based on the rag and tal system. A rag is a melody which has got certain system. First of all, it must have ascending and descending order. Within that system, a musician can take his or her imagination to any level and create something different. There are timings of the ragas. For example, ragas which could be performed only before sunrise. There are others which are performed after sunrise, after noon, before sunset and after sunset and late night. And they fall in different categories which create different kinds of emotions. So each rag can have many shades to it, which is what lends it such an exciting uh, characteristic. जनरेशन है जो नए बच्चे हैं उनको अगर ये कह दो कि चार बजे भोर में उठना है तो बड़ी बहुत बड़ी मुसीबत है उनके लिए हैं लोगों को यही करना पड़ा था कि जब शिक्षा हमारी शुरू हुई तो हम साढ़े तीन बजे भोर में उठा दिए जाते थे हाँ फिर अपना 
थोड़ा प्राणायाम व्यायाम ये सब करके फिर अभ्यास में लगना पड़ रहा था फिर अभ्यास कम से कम एक दफ़ा बैठ के चार चार से पाँच घंटे करना पड़ता था फिर थोड़ा गैप मिलता था तो ये तो रूटीन में था उस जमाने की The student life when we learn, you know, the, the younger generation when they that that time it has to be very very disciplined life, you know. They should not get distracted. They should only concentrate on the music what they are doing, and uh, pay respect to guru, touch his feet, surrender yourself. All these things are you know connected uh, while we do this guru shishya parampara. So in discipline, sincerity. and determination all these things are very very important so one has to learn from the guru for years and years then guru decides when the disciple is ready to go on the stage and perform and once guru gives the permission no this disciple is okay he can go and start performing it's another learning process मेरे गुरु लोग मेरे से कहते थे विशेष करके बाबा जीवन दास जी कि मिटा दे अपनी हस्ती को अगर कुछ मर्तबा चाहे कि दाना खाक में मिलकर गुले गुलजार होता है तो मैंने ये किया मैंने अपने आप को मिटा दिया था उसके अंदर मैंने अपने शरीर को शरीर नहीं देखा जिस बचपन में मुझे दूध मिलना चाहिए था वहाँ दूध ना मिल मैं चार चार दिन तक भूखा रहा ऐसे किया क्योंकि बिना अपने मिटाए आप बन नहीं सकते ये तो कटु सत्य है
I was born in Bihar, 1933. I had no musical blood ran in my veins. My grandfather was a hard-boiled advocate without an ounce of musicality in him. He thought that music was the easiest way to hell and damnation. If there is demand for your performance, you are lucky. If not, you have to starve. And that is the situation. That is why even though there are very talented artists, they hesitate to take fine arts as their career. My first meeting with music was at the age of three and a half, when one of Bengal's top musicians was singing somewhere. And after about a couple of minutes of listening, I stood up and asked him to shut up and not to make such infernal noise. So naturally, he did not take much notice of me. My mother whisked me out of the room and gave me a good spank. One takes as children, when parents hand over their young children to a maestro, and they are brought up in that atmosphere of sharing and uh, learning. So this sort of a system has been there in Indian society for a very long time. And it helps promotion, continuity, and I think it's been going on. That's why we talk of it as our inheritance. It's there for hundreds and hundreds of years. That time there was like court musicians and so my forefathers, uh, they came here and we uh, started living in Jaipur. So my tradition is like 300 years old. And since then we are uh, maintaining this uh, tradition. The atmosphere in the house, music is there everywhere, and plus the heredity, this really plays a, an important role. Uh, so a, a small boy in our family grows up with the music, with the sound of music here. When I was a kid, I, I noticed that I don't have to learn it, you know. The music is flowing, you know, it's like in our blood, and I know so many things, you know, it was like in my case. The same thing uh, happened with my grandson, you know. He, he was only four when he started recognizing, you know, ragas, like what we play, one rag today, and if we play the same thing tomorrow, he would say, oh, this is rag, this, this is this, that, this rag, this is this rag. So we, we found that, uh, you know, he has this kind of uh, uh, talent. At the age of five or five and a half, my father made friends with the local musicians wherever he was transferred. There was one gentleman who played tabla, another gentleman who played the bamboo flute. They used to come to our house, and each weekend there was some sort of musical story they used to play. I saw the bamboo flute, I wanted to get one, and my mother immediately vetoed this. But I was smarting under a sense of injustice. This gentleman had about 12 bamboo flutes of different size. One day when I was not being noticed by my mother, I went and said, uncle, you have got so many, why can't you give me one? They said, all right. When he was in the process of giving me the flute, my mother came and saw it. The result was that I was shut up in the bathroom for about three hours or so. Bathroom was a very scary place in those days. So after three hours, when I secured my release, the gentleman had completed his playing. He left one bamboo flute and said, Bhabi, don't beat this child. Who knows, he can become a musician later on.
There's a misconception, which I think is in Western classical music also, that in order to be able to listen to it, be or be qualified to listen to it, you must be educated in the music. All absolute nonsense. You just need to have ears and a mind, and either you like it or you don't like it. I'll give you an example of myself. I've been listening to classical music for over 30 years. I really don't know what Tals are. I think I'm tone deaf. Rags, I couldn't name you. All I can tell you is that when I listen to it, a divine anand, you know, peace overcomes me. It is a natural thing. I don't have to be educated. If it happens to me, I'm nothing special. It happens to everyone. So you don't need to be educated or it is accessible to all. There's no barriers to uh, listening to classical music. Anybody can enjoy, or uh, uh, you know, delicious food. No matter whether you know how to cook that dish, but you can still say, oh, it's good, it tastes good. I think same is with music. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,
modern generation is very choosy questioning type but only thing that i try to drive into their heads that there's no shortcut to fame there's no shortcut to you know finished musicianship you have to do your you know sweating as much as you do you'll get the dividends accordingly You should give so one gap. Ta di di ton tonga ta. Don't attack. Tari kete guna ka tonga. Ah, good. to see a girl with langa davani playing a gatam they were all surprised to see me on the stage some musicians uh, encouraged me some musicians why why you why are you coming to this this is very difficult why why do you want to take a risk and playing this instrument Now she is also playing. I am with him, with her. So I am very happy. My instrument, lady, also a success. That, that is. Uh, Master. Oh, oh. You spent 
artist as well we face a lot of problems not many male artists are willing to accompany uh, when we ask them when we personally ask them we want a certain way of playing they say no they can't do it and they roughly flatly say that and they even say no i can't accompany a lady artist like that and that that's really hurting not that we are not we are uh, on par with any other artist
Maybe tomorrow morning we take a long walk from that edge to this edge of the race course. That would be really good to build up the appetite for a good breakfast. Thank you. Which one of these is mint tea? Yeah, no one has sort of tried to document uh, you know, these people who have almost sacrificed the better part of their lives in uh, training up people who, who will be the future maestros or who will carry forward the tradition. But regarding the people who voluntarily chosen to shy away from glamour lights and come forward to declare their work, it's interesting to try and document their work because they have been silently moving mountains. Because they have been taking student after student, training them step by step with great patience and perseverance, whatever amount of time it takes for a student to try and imbibe, doing it in the way they learnt it, not sidestepping any of the rigors of learning music and really trying to create the next line of musicians. <laughs> to be a good teacher is a very, very difficult task because it requires you to come down to the level of a beginner each time a student comes to you. It requires great perseverance. <laughs> When I first time became Guru, one girl came to me and said, would you please teach me? So she gave me that Guru Pada, <laughs> place of Guru. That was something I will never forget because till that time I was really a student. <laughs> I started teaching when I came to Mumbai. And uh, it happens that they listen to me over radio in concerts and when you like somebody, you want to learn from them. So that likewise, uh, so many girls came to me and then they started learning from me. The main difference that I find uh, because of the change that has uh, taken place like uh, with music, the teaching methods have also changed. When I learned 
I was not allowed to take paper, pencil, nothing, nothing. I had just to listen and remember what he taught. And if I forget, forget. Then next time when he comes, I have to again learn that. They don't have time now. Life has become so fast. Uh, nobody has time to put uh, four hours, uh, even for Riyas. I mean, one hour teaching is fine. To be a musician needs training and a proper approach where they are self-learning with the help of technology. For that, they are fully equipped. So me, I don't need to teach them songs anymore. Not that I don't want to teach them or I can't teach them. When I don't have time, now they can enrich themselves by themselves and bring any teacher and enrich their repertoire. So now you just sing one song maybe, just like this, okay? Just quickly and then see how the, the togetherness, the one, the, the great aspect is how they can be together. To be able to be together requires a lot of effort to work individually and to know the song well. You, can, you don't need to even sing from here, okay? Sing one song. technology and commercialism and uh, I mean in every field it has entered it has entered into music also the, uh, the whole scene has changed and it's not just singing that uh, you have your talent and you will be able to go in the market no it's not possible anymore you have to learn other things as well how to carry yourself as a musician how to talk how to write uh, uh, how to handle these equipments, how to handle microphone. I mean, they just sit, they don't know how to handle it unless they are taught how to handle your microphone, how to throw your voice.
दृढ़ भावना होनी चाहिए मेरा एक और कहना है विश्वासम फलदायकम अगर आपका विश्वास है तो आपको फल जरूर मिलेगा सिलसिला भी एक आत्म सिलसिला है रूहानियत का सिलसिला है जिसको कि हम यानी रूहानियत कहते हैं तो रूहानियत जो है यानी आत्मपन वो जो है पैदा किया जाता है ईश्वर की याद से
भाई भाभी जी हम तो सर शुरू कर दूँ जी सर जी to pay my respect just for that reason that he was so uh, warm hearted and open right from the beginning he said you should come to me whenever you have time or if i am at home you should just come to me take an appointment or you know just call me to see if i am home and if i am teaching you are welcome to sit in class and see how it's done or if you have any queries you are most welcome to address them to me he says that the future of classical music is bright and that the classical music will never ever die it has gone through so many changes in the last thousands of years that it will continue to change and evolve and that is but natural because change is such a constant process in this uh, is a living treasure in those people so i bow to 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 them to all their sacrifices in their lives personal sacrifices to keep alive the heritage of india getting concerts getting the clapping from what no no that is not the ultimate it is beyond that you must you must go to the other world you must see him god <laughs> 